Let me say, before I look at Quentin's argument specifically, two things about it. First, I don't think it's an argument against the existence of God, per se. It's an argument against creation. It's an argument against creation out of nothing, but it's not an argument against God's existence as such. And secondly, it's not really an argument based on the incompatibility of theism with the truth of science, but it's an argument based on the supposed incompatibility of theism with scientific realism about certain theories, particularly scientific realism about the general theory of relativity. Well, I don't think the theist need be committed at all to uh, scientific realism about certain space-time theories. After all, the general theory is incompatible with quantum theory as well, not only with theism, if Quentin is right. So that one needn't be a, a realist about these theories in order to regard them as correct and accurate and making correct predictions. So the argument is really that creation is incompatible with scientific realism. Uh, I don't think the argument, even if correct, therefore, is quite so earth-shattering as it might seem at first. But is the argument correct? Well, the argument is that for every instant of time, there is always a prior instant, even if time is finite. And therefore, there can be no cause of the universe. Now, the key premise in the argument seems to be that if every instantaneous state of the universe has a cause, then the universe has no cause. If every instantaneous state of the universe has a cause, then the universe as such has no cause. Now notice, first of all, that that is a philosophical, not a scientific premise. That premise is nowhere in the general theory of relativity. So this doesn't demonstrate the incompatibility of that uh, scientific theory with creation. Rather, this is a philosophical argument that uses scientific uh, uh, information to try to disqualify creation. But it is a philosophical, not a scientific argument. Now, is this premise true? Well, it seems to me that it's false to say that just because every instantaneous state in the universe has a cause, the universe can have no cause. Um, what is the justification for that premise? Well, it's not altogether clear from Quentin's presentation. Um, perhaps he thinks that if every state of the universe is explained, then the whole universe is explained. But that is clearly a fallacy of composition. It's like reasoning because every part of an elephant is light in weight, therefore the whole elephant is light in weight. So that can't be the justification for the premise. Well, maybe Quentin means if A explains B and B entails C, then A explains C. But again, that doesn't seem to be true. I don't think explanation is closed under entailment in that way. Uh, to give a, uh, an example, um, I could say that the lady from housekeeping making my bed explains why my bed was made. The fact that my bed was made entails that my bed exists. But does therefore the ladies from housekeeping making my bed explain the existence of the bed? Well, clearly not. So that won't work as a, a justification for this premise. And then consider the argument uh, for the fact that the universe would have a cause. Whatever begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist. Therefore, the universe has a cause. Quentin's argument implies that um, the universe never began to exist because it had no cause. If whatever begins to exist has a cause, then the universe, being uncaused, never began to exist. But in what sense did it never begin to exist? Well, Quentin's would say the universe never began to exist because for every state of the universe, there is always another instantaneous prior state. But I think that's just the wrong definition of what it means to begin to exist. To begin to exist does not mean to have a beginning point of existence. It simply means that for any temporal interval at which something exists, there is only a finite number of equal uh, intervals prior to that. Uh, and it's in that sense that we can say that the universe began to exist. Um, and therefore, Quentin's premise, I think, is unjustified. Finally, notice one odd anomaly about this argument. If it's correct, then nothing could ever begin to move from a state of rest. Because if something is at rest and begins to move, there is no first instant at which it's, at which it's moving. If it's moving, then it's already in motion. It's not beginning to move. But if it's at rest, then it hasn't yet begun to move. So if for something to begin to move from a state of rest implies there is no first 
instant at which it begins to move. Rather, it just begins to move, and you can always analyze its motion in terms of these instantaneous states right back to the point of rest. In exactly the same way, the universe could begin to exist even if it lacks an initial instant or beginning point of existence. 